The FGC and esports have always had a contentious relationship, but with the decline of teams like Panda and CLG recently, I think it's important to talk about what each one learns and takes away from one another because while a lot of times they are at odds with each other, esports really benefits a lot from fighting games and there's a reason that they've been so heavily tied together for the last two decades. The FGC has a long and very cherished history of grassroots events while esports has evolved to be a more corporate structure with more stability but less flexibility. In a lot of ways, the FGC actually helped to pave the way for esports to be in the mainstream today. Day. If we take a look back to the 80s and 90s where the FGC gets its roots, players would gather in arcades to compete in games like Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, Tekken, and Capcom vs SNK2. While there was always a huge scene in Japan, the arcade boom of the 80s hit both Japan and the United States, and Street Fighter 2 is actually the second highest grossing arcade cabinet in the history of arcades with over $10 billion in revenue. Games this popular started to have their own tournaments completely grow up organically, and TOs were just arcade managers who wanted to get more people into the venue. Flashing forward about 20 years as the internet became more widespread, online communities started popping up to form around these games. Sites like Shuriuken were some of the first ones to really bring people together and try to coordinate tournaments and even just share tech and ideas and other things. This allowed players from all over the country and even the world in some cases to connect and compete with each other, which really started to grow the FGC. A little bit later, esports began to emerge and while it was primarily focused on StarCraft in South Korea at the time, esports also began to make its way over to the US very early on, not only in the StarCraft scene, but also also with games like World of Warcraft. It's important to realize that as esports began to grow into the giant that it is today, when it started, the FGC was already well established. In fact, some of the earliest teams that were involved in the FGC would actually go on to later pick up more traditional esports teams. Complexity and Evil Geniuses, two scenes that were early adopters of the fighting game community, both ended up at one point owning a team in the LCS for League of Legends. Over time, esports became immensely more popular and started gaining regular corporate sponsorship, and the structure of the scene really began to change. Teams and organizations began to form around these almost as speculative assets because they thought that there would be a very large monetary incentive to getting into the scene early, and events became much more formalized and highly structured. Games like StarCraft, Dota, and League of Legends became the face of esports, and millions of dollars in prize money was up for grabs. But even as esports became more formalized, or maybe as a result of it, the FGC remained largely grassroots roots at its core. This allowed for a unique culture and community to thrive within the scene, and many fans and players really appreciate the FGC's focus on individual skill and expression and the inclusive nature of the community. While esports moved towards a more corporate and formalized structure that started to view players only in terms of the money they could bring in, the FGC still seemed to value people as people, or failing that to at least let the personality of the player shine. Another holdover from the FGC's grassroots nature has been a much more diverse set of games which has allowed a larger amount of players to flourish within the scene. While esports tends to focus on a few select games and entire events can simply be for one single game, the FGC has a wide variety of games that players can compete in. From classic fighting games like Street Fighter and Tekken to newer titles like Dragon Ball Fighters and DNF Duel, the FGC has always been the motto that it has something for everyone and everyone is welcome. This kind of attitude has always created a strong tradition of community building and the idea of supporting your locals has been something that's been the core of the FGC for several decades now. It has always been about bringing people together to share their passion of fighting games and to compete at the highest level. This has allowed friendships and rivalries from across borders, countries, and generations as players have come together to test their skills against one another. As esports continues to grow and become mainstream, in some ways it leaves the FGC behind and in some ways it diverges negatively from it. The FGC has to continue to evolve and while it will never fully adopt the corporate structure of esports, it can still benefit from some aspects of that. In the past couple years, we've already seen a couple places where the FGC has adopted a more esports approach. We've seen more regulated tournament structure, we've seen official leagues crop up for certain games, and as more players get signed by esports organizations, we've unfortunately also seen the high amount of turnover that can occur within an esports team. Offering players structure
character and stability, as well as a more clear path on what it means to be a professional fighting game player, is always something that we should strive towards. But with the FGC, you really have to balance it with its origin and its grassroots culture. The FGC is unique and that it fosters a strong sense of community and connection across its players, something that's really been missing in esports as it goes more and more mainstream. With the collapse of some of the few major esports orgs that have been providing this stability for players, the FGC is facing some challenges today, but it's remained resilient in the past and it really does continue to thrive with games like Street Fighter VI on the horizon, pushing the boundaries for what players can accomplish. The relationship between the FGC and esports is always going to be complicated, but it's also an opportunity for both communities to learn from each other and grow. By adopting some of the more formal structure of esports, the FGC can help give players more stability and a clearer path to becoming a professional player, while still retaining the grassroots spirit and community that makes the FGC unique. As esports continues to grow and evolve, the FGC will undoubtedly face new challenges and opportunities, but with its passion and dedication, I'm sure it will come out stronger on the other side. If you made it this far, consider subscribing or dropping a like on the video if you want to see more content. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.